Your analysis lecture. Your analysis is the most common test performed in the medical laboratory. Your analysis is an efficient and effective way of determining how well the body is processing nutrients and excreting waste. Urine is a fountain of information and a diagnosis and management of renal or urinary tract diseases can be done through your analysis. There can be detection of metabolic and systemic diseases not directly related to the kidneys. Some of these diseases may include but are not limited to diabetes and liver disease. The formation of urine. Urine is formed in the kidneys. Impurities are cleansed from the blood as it passes through the kidneys. Normal urine production is 1.5 liters per day. Your analysis or wave testing includes the physical and the chemical examination. So the physical exam is the first step in the urine analysis, which we evaluate the color and the clarity and also specific gravity by a refractometer. And typically today we do not use refractometers. We basically go by the specific gravity that is on the reagent dipstick. And the step two that we do in the urinalysis process is the chemical exam, which is the reagent dipstick. And we can either do this manually or by an analyzer. Determining the color and clarity. So terms that we use to describe color are straw, yellow, dark yellow, and amber. Some abnormal urine colors include brown, green, red, pink, or orange. So the colors of normal urine, we use the term colorless, meaning no color, straw, yellow, and amber. So colorless means no color. We do not use the, the term clear. You will hear somebody say, oh, that urine is clear. It's actually incorrect. Clear means transparent, but it can contain color. Whereas if you use the term colorless, that means no color. Straw has a little bit of a yellow tinge to it. Yellow is a little bit darker and amber is our most concentrated urine that is a very, very dark yellow. Abnormal urine colors could indicate the presence of disease, medication, or dye. Dye meaning CT contrast dye. That is sometimes given to a patient. It is important to recognize normal color to ensure the recognition of abnormal color. So a yellow-brown may indicate bilirubin in the urine, an excessive amount. Orange-yellow could mean that there's urobilogen. Dark red means porphyrin products, red blood cells, and hemoglobin could be pre present. Porphyrin products meaning a red blood cell byproduct, or we also call this the heme molecule. Porphyrin is combined with iron to form the heme. Red-brown color can indicate myoglobin, red blood cells, or hemoglobin present in the urine. Clear red could be an indicator of hemoglobin or porphyrin products. Cloudy red could be an indicator of red blood cells, meaning whole red blood cells. These are not red blood cells that are damaged and need to be excreted. Green means biliverdin, which is an oxidization of bilirubin. We often will do a foam test. Bili pigment is formed in the breakdown of hemoglobin and converted to bilirubin. Abnormal colors, so on the left hand side we have what normal urine looks like and as you can see this container is labeled on the lid and on 
the cup portion. Here is an example of a green colored urine and as you can see there's a little bit of foam that can exist on the top of the specimen. Examples of a pink, clear red, and then dark red or reddish brown color. Certain odors give clues to pathological conditions. So ammonia, or we also call this splitting of urea, can be an indicator of a urinary tract infection, liver damage. It can also be a result of a certain diets, diets high in protein and dehydration. Fruity or sweet smell, such as acetones and ketones, this is typically in patients who are diabetic. Bowel smell is the decomposition of leukocytes, which is pretty common in people who have a urinary tract infection. There are also some foods that will cause this smell, such as asparagus. And then a musty smell usually is an indicator of PKU or phenylketonuria. Urine clarity, there are four categories. There is clear for clarity, hazy, cloudy, and turbid or very cloudy. Substances that can cause urine to be cloudy or turbid are bacteria, cells, cast, mucus, and crystals, also seen when observing the urine under the microscope. So specific gravity, which we talked about a little bit in the introduction of the physical exam of the urine, by definition is the relation of the weight of the solution to the weight of equal volume of water at a given temperature. It is the measure of the density of the solution. Water is used as a point of reference and is assigned the value 1.000. Specific gravity is a ratio and has no units behind it. In addition of solutes, you will have solutes of electrolytes such as sodium, potassium, chloride, and there are many others. Also creatinine and urea are also considered solutes, which will all increase the specific gravity. So the clinical significance of specific gravity, it is dependent on hydration and the health of a kidney. So normal is 1.005 to 1.030. And the higher the range, the more dehydrated a patient could be. And the lower the range, the more hydrated and the better the kidneys are working. So first morning specimen greater than 1.020 is fairly common, mainly because we are not drinking a lot through the night, so we will be a little bit more on the dehydrated side. If the first morning specimen is less than 1.020, it may indicate that the kidney has lost its ability to concentrate urine. Normal 24-hour timed specimens usually fall in the range of 1.015 and 1.025, usually equals out within that 24-hour period.